Hello everyone. I apologize for not having an episode for you on Friday. I caught a cold early last week and I lost my voice for a while. I'm doing better now but I've still got a cough that won't go away and my voice isn't quite back to normal but it's good enough that I'm back today and I'm here with Luke Skywalker in my Death Star Derby toy box and I'm going to hook up the logic for the fighters and the turrets in the trench. Once again, there's a bit of a story I'm telling here. We should move. <laughs> Shut up, Luke. I'm trying to talk. Once again, there's a bit of a story I'm telling here over the course of the race. If you remember the playthrough back in episode 23, when you first enter the trench, there's a lone Y-Wing fighter that flies overhead. The second time through the trench, you see the Y-Wing fighter again, but this time it's pursued by Darth Vader's TIE fighter. The third time through the trench, you see Luke's X-Wing, which is again pursued by Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. So to make this happen, it isn't just a simple matter of hooking up to a vehicle summoner. The logic needs to be a bit more involved, because we need to do something different on each lap. So to save some time, I've already placed the creativity toys that we're going to need, so let's begin by reviewing those. So I've created a trigger area down here inside the exit leading out into the trench and it fills the whole area there and I'll get to the paths in a moment I've got three counters and just like last time we're going to use those to keep track of the lap that we're on I've got a time delayer I've got three vehicle summoners I have my Y-Wing power disc on the base. This is from the Rise of the Empire power disc pack. And if you don't have that, you can use the X-Wing um, instead of the Y-Wing. But uh, I like the Y-Wing because in the movie they do the first bombing runs. And I got a couple creative toys there that we'll get to later when we get to the turrets. And then down here the paths the two paths that I have in the trench each terminate in a trigger area down here. Okay, so let's uh, let's go over the paths first. And I've already taken the liberty of drawing these in because that takes a little bit of time, but I'll show you what I've got. So we'll start over here with these. And you'll notice this first one is lined up with the top edge of that uh, uh, platform over here with the pipes going along the side. And it's lined up with the middle of the third square there. So that's where that one is lined up. And the next one is lined up down here about uh, midway on that ledge with the pipes and again underneath there. And the top path <clears throat> basically mirrors the bottom path. So the bottom path, uh, let's see, travels over here. The next path point gets dropped there. It's just uh, about a, the length of one of these pieces of track down here apart. And I've done that with points all along here. So you can see there's two points there, there's two points there. And this is all the way along the path, uh, along the trench. And then the last path points that are on that level are right here, right before the ramp. Uh, let's see, how can I best get... So that can probably, that's probably your best bet. So you could pause the video there and kind of count the number of squares on the wall or on the floor to figure out where those are. Now the next path point for the lower path Oops, let's see if I can get centered on it here. So it's there. The next point above that is in the middle of that square. And that gives you an idea where that's located. The next point, still in the center of the path, or the center of the trench, is right here. And that tells you where that is. 
And if you don't get these exactly right, or exactly the same as mine, that's okay. The next point comes out over here. This is on the lower path. And ideally, um, or normally I guess, when you have a craft pursuing another craft, there's a little bit of a delay. So these paths diverge a little bit here. So like the X-Wing will veer off and it takes a moment for the guy flying the, the pursuing craft to uh, follow suit. So that's why his path point is over here, a little bit higher. But this one's located uh, about right there, about lined up with the trench like there. And the height, maybe about the height of where that tower is over there on the left. And this one is one nudge up a little bit further. And then the next point is down over here. And at this point, I, hit, I get them moving downward because I want them to go below the edge of the uh, terrain there and get out of sight. So this is where this point is. And the next one is right over here. Again, if you don't get these exactly the same, that's okay. And then the last points terminate down here inside the trigger areas. Uh, whoops, there we go. And they're at the height of the uh, surface of the Death Star there. So those are the two paths that I've drawn. And the idea is, is, as you're driving down the trench at eye level, those fighters fly up the ramp and fly off to the right and out of sight. And you can't drive faster or fast enough to get down there to see where they go once they move out of sight, so that's good. All right, for the path point properties, for the path properties. So active is on. I've set the speed to the maximum of 300 and auto start is on by default. That is very important. And also under the path point options, I have set the speed modifier to 600. So between the 600 modifying the 300, uh, these <laughs> ships are going to be really booking. And that's important because they're traveling the same direction you are. And then for every path point on here, you need to set the speed modifier on here to 600 as well. And you do that for every path point. And that ensures that those flying vehicles pass overhead of you as you would expect. And for the upper path, it's set the exact same way and the speed modifier is set on the path point options as well. And again, you're going to do that for every point on that path too. Set the speed modifier to 600. Okay. So, uh, well, let's set up the counters next. So this counter will be for lap one. So under the properties for this, we're going to set the target count to be one. We're going to turn off the visible display. The other two properties are fine. This will be for lap two. The only thing we have to change here is the visible display. This one will be for lap three. So the target count needs to be three. And turn off visible display. All right, this time delayer, I'm going to change the delay time on here to be two seconds. Okay, and then on the vehicle summoners, under the generated vehicle options, we're going to orient along the path and the rest of those properties are fine. Oops, turn that on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I got skill upgrades to do for Luke. 
I think I've actually got him upgraded. There's just like one skill point that I have that I can't buy anything with, so it keeps nagging me about that. All right, so there we go. All right, so the ships are going to be generated when we drive through this trigger area here. So on this trigger area, we're going to do a new logic connection when entered by player. And once again, we'll key this all off of player one. So when entered by player one, we're going to come up here to the first counter and we're going to increment that by one. And then on the counter, a new logic connection. When the target is reached, we're going to come over to this uh, vehicle summoner here. And we're going to scroll down to the hexagonal power disks and we're going to select the Y-Wing fighter. All right. And then we're going to come down here to the trigger area for that lower path because that's the one we're going to hook up to in just a moment. And that lower trigger area, or the lower path comes to this first trigger area. So when the vehicle enters this path, and we'll just do any, entered by any, just to make it simple, then we'll come back over here to the vehicle summoner and remove it. Uh, remove the Y-Wing, and that will free up the memory. So we scroll all the way to the bottom and remove all. And on this vehicle summoner, we're going to connect that to that lower path. Uh, let's see. There we go. And it's the lower path. Okay. And there we are. So that's it for lap one. So the player drives through here. They're probably going to pass this point before the vehicle gets generated. And then that Y-Wing will get generated and start moving pretty rapidly along that path and fly right over top of the player as you're going down the trench, which will be pretty exciting. Now, lap two. We'll do a new logic connection when entered by player one. We're going to come up to our second counter. And we're going to increment that one by one. And the target count on this one set to two. So the first lap, the first time you pass through there, we'll increment this, but nothing will happen. The second time you're through, you'll hit the target count. So on this counter, a new logic connection, when the target is reached, so on our second lap, we're going to come to this vehicle summoner again. We're going to generate the Y-Wing once again. And also on this uh, counter for lap two, new logic connection, when the target's reached, we're going to come over to the time delayer and start the delay. And two seconds later, this will go off. So we'll do a new logic connection on the time delayer. When the delay is completed, we'll come to this vehicle summoner. We're going to go to the Rise Against the Empire playset. And we're going to go down to Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. And that will generate Vader's TIE Fighter. And we're going to put his TIE Fighter on the bottom or on the top track. So we'll do a new path connection. There we go, we'll put his up here. Generated vehicle options, toy box path. So we'll put Vader's on that level, okay? And then that path ends up in the second trigger area down here. And you've probably already guessed what we gotta do. Once Vader's TIE Fighter reaches this point, we want to remove it. So in this trigger area, a new logic connection when entered by any. 
We'll come back down to the second vehicle summoner and remove all. And there we go. So that's connected and that one's already connected so there's nothing more we need to do with that. And that's it for lap two. Now for lap three, you've probably kind of guessed what we're going to do here. New logic connection when entered by player one. We're going to come over to counter number three. And we're going to increment that one by one. So again, on the first lap, nothing will happen. On the second lap, nothing will happen because the target count on here is three. So on the final lap, that will trigger this counter. So on this counter, a new logic connection. When the target is reached, we're going to come over to this vehicle summoner. And we're going to do Rise Against the Empire. Luke's X-Wing. And let's go ahead and connect this one. New path connection to that lower path. Generated vehicle options, toy box path. And once Luke's X-Wing gets over to this, uh, the end of this path and enters this trigger area, we'll need to take it out. So a new logic connection when entered by any. Come over to our third summoner. And we'll do what we've been doing. All the way to the bottom and remove all. And the other thing this counter needs to do a new logic connection when the target is reached. Come over to our time delayer for Darth Vader's TIE Fighter and start that delay. And that's already hooked up, so we're good to go. So the final lap through, you'll see Luke Skywalker's X-Wing followed by Vader's TIE Fighter. And I believe that's everything with that. Now, once again, we have our button over here near the starting line that we're using for our reset. And I'm not going to hook everything up, but I'll show you what you need to do. So on here, you're going to need to do a new logic connection when pressed, because you're going to want to race this probably more than once. And so we need to reset everything. And so what you're going to do is come over to the counter and reset. And you're going to do that for the other two counters as well. Hook that button up for those two, just like I did for that one. And you're also going to want to hook that button up just to be safe to each of these vehicle summoners and remove all, like we did for the trigger areas down there. And that's just in case one player gets out ahead of the other and the second player... Uh, hasn't finished yet or well, actually not shouldn't be an issue but just to be sure that maybe you abort before those vehicles have a chance to get down there or something just to make sure those vehicles are cleared out that's a good idea all right the last thing we need are the turrets in the trench and I've placed these uh, these little turret stands here this is from Building Sets Group 5. It's the small Death Star Tower. And yeah, the path's going to be a problem. <laughs> Might have to finagle around with this a little bit. Get that activity meter to go down. So you're probably going to want to do this step before we put those paths in. All right, so there's that. All right, so on these towers, 
Let me show you where I've placed them. And the easiest way to do that is to look at the tracks. So these track pieces, there's one, two, three, and then the towers on either side. And one, two, three, and again on either side. And then one, two, three and on either side. So there's six towers total. So they're evenly spaced apart like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to place these Death Star turrets on top of those towers. And the problem we have though with this is that um, if we just place these turrets it's going to work fine on the first lap. But when you drive past the turrets the first time, they're going to rotate to follow you. And uh, they'll try to track your movement. So the next time through this, uh, this trench, those turrets are going to be facing the wrong way. And so they're going to be turning back towards you as you drive by them and then trying to follow you. And it's just not going to work very well. So what we need to do is reset these on each lap. And to do that, I'm going to use a time delayer and a replayer. So on the time delayer, we'll leave the default delay time of one second. That should be fine. And on the replayer, I will take the playback interval to zero. Both of these again are under the Creativity Toys drawer. So we come out of the editor. And I'm going to step on the replayer to get the little menu in the lower right. And on my Wii U, I press B to start recording. Then I got to step off to get back into the editor. So now that the re uh, replayer is recording, we can put down the turrets. So this is the first set of towers here. So one there, one there. And the next set of towers, make sure that's lined up on there. This way we ensure that on each lap, these, these uh, turrets, these cannons are pointing in the right direction towards the player. So I like that. There we go. And then I'll exit out of the editor. We'll step on the replayer again. Press B a second time to stop recording. And I'm going to leave those turrets there. Okay. All right. So for the turrets, we're going to leave those on that replayer having played back by default. So when I come back into my toy box after I save it here, that's what it should look like. And in order to give enough time for those to clear and reset. We're going to come over here to this uh, trigger area, which is right after the hangar that we put down last time. And I'm going to do a new logic connection when entered by player one. We'll come back over to our replayer. La 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 la. It's such a huge toy box. And we'll go ahead and clear. Okay. And we also need to start that time delayer. So we're going to give it about a second or so to uh, clear and do what it needs to do. And then we'll do a new logic connection on this trigger area when entered by player one. Come over to that time delayer and we'll start that. And then on the time delayer, new logic connection when the delay is completed, we'll go to the replayer and do a playback. 
So it'll take the cannons out when you drive through that trigger area. Yeah, yeah. And then a second later, it'll put the turrets back in, facing the right direction. So when you come through this uh, trench the second and third time, these turrets are pointing your way. So that's really good. All right, we are pretty much out of time, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just end at this point. If you want to see how this works, you can watch the playthrough video back in episode 23. But that's it for the Death Star Trench. Next time, we'll finish up this course by adding the TIE Fighters and the Vehicle Weapon Generators. Thank you for watching. For those of you who are building my toy box on your own systems, don't forget that I've got logic diagrams on my blog that will help you out. The link is in the video description. And before you go, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already and you like we what I'm doing going, in Disney Infinity. Have a good day!